Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to build a little website. And the main point of this is to sort of cement the, the stuff that we went over last time. Last time, if you recall, I created an, um, a website with some razor pages. And we went through and we looked at the, the razor pages and so on. Now what we're going to do is actually... Uh, essentially do it from scratch, all right? Um, and we're going to create a website uh, site about a topic. And we're going to sort of follow, this will be sort of a chance for us to review the notions of good web design, all right? Like I mentioned before, the focus of this class really is on server-side scripting. But we're still making web pages here. So therefore, everything you learned about web design in CIS 216 and, and elsewhere applies here. We don't throw that out the window, all right? So therefore, it's important that our pages look good and are professional and are well designed, more so even than looking good, all right? So who has a topic? What should we do a web website about today? A little mini website. It's my mic on. What should we do a little mini website about today? Grocery store. For a grocery store. Uh, uh, for a grocery store. Okay. We'll do a website about a grocery store. All right. Let's think. And again. What pages do you think we ought to have for our grocery store? Homepage. Homepage. All right. We got one down. Products. Pardon me? Products. Products. All right. Services. Services. All right. Okay, remember, we got to walk before we can run here. So that seems a little more advanced. So let's, let's, let's put up on the board what we have so far. Because even though we're using server-side technology, we're basically developing a static site. All right. Uh, we're going to find that these dynamic pages and these server-side scripting pages are a mix of two things. They're a mix of plain old HTML plus server-side stuff, all right? And so what we're doing in this phase of the class is learning, well, how can we do, how can we do that same old static HTML pages like we did before, but we're going to do them in this new environment with Razor, Razor pages. So we mentioned that there might be a home page product page, a services page, all right? Anyone think of other pages? Contact us. Contact us, sure. All right? Anything else? Store locations. Yeah, locations. Okay. This seems like a good place to start. So we're going to start with those. Now again, this is assuming that we're doing a real basic website. And again, all, all the things that were suggested about having searches and things like that are all good suggestions, but we're not quite ready at that point yet. So let's go and build this site. Now, remember that you came up with these fairly quickly, and I think they're pretty good. But when you're doing your project, one thing that you should think of is think of who are going to be the people visiting your site. You know, who are going to be visiting your site? What are they going to be interested in? And try to look at the site from their perspective. 
we talked about in the 216 class having personas, where personas are uh, sample people, all right, representative of different groups of people that maybe would be visiting our site. And so, who might personas be for this particular site? Who would be different kinds of people that might be visiting this site? Consumers, right. Someone who just wants to shop at the store. Yes? Uh, parent wanting to buy a birthday cake. Parent wanting buying a birthday cake. Absolutely. Business partners. Business partners. That's good. That's very good. All right. Maybe people seeking a job it would be another one. So we could actually expand our site to include those things uh, in here. Um, Let's, let's mark them up here whether we actually do it or not. You know, we, we don't necessarily uh, have to. the goals for these you know some of them are pretty straightforward uh, job seekers one of their goals might be to find out about if this is a place I want to work at all right uh, another goal of job seekers would be do they have any positions available a third goal well, I don't know if there's a third goal for, for job seekers, right? For the assignment that I made in CISS 216, I said come up with three goals, all right? But in this case, eh, maybe there's only those two goals. Do I want to even work here? And do they even have any openings, right? Because I could look, I want to find both those out before I apply there, right? Uh, I, you know, first of all, if there's no openings, maybe I wouldn't bother applying. Second of all, if I look and I say, well, you know, um, you know, mandatory 16 hours of overtime per day, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'd look and say, oh, maybe I don't want to work there. All right? And so on. So we would then develop our functionality, our requirements, like the kinds of things that we're going to have. And let's just talk about the jobs one because that's a good, simple one. The jobs one might be something like a listing of the positions open by uh, location subdivided by job function. There might be a, a, uh, a description of the benefits of the place. Uh, maybe salary ranges or, or, or pay ranges and so on. Uh, maybe testimonials from employees. Maybe. I don't know. If you thought it would help your cause, maybe you'd do that. Anyone see a problem with doing that, putting testimonials of employees? Yes? People think they're fake. People might think they're fake, yeah. If I saw a job offered somewhere and it's like, oh, this is the greatest place I've ever worked, blah, 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 I would think, yeah, right. You know, I think that they're being insincere. Yes? Could also be biased. I mean, you probably only got to show the positive reviews. But yeah, that's true. That's true. They're, they're definitely going to be... Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to be, the ones presented are definitely going to be slanted, so you take it with a grain of salt. So, yeah, if you think it would help your cause, maybe put it there. I tend to think, I, I said it, and it, like the minute I said it, I thought, no, nah, I probably wouldn't do that. Okay, so let's go and do this. Let's go and create at least part of this website and see what we're doing here. So. Let's go into Visual Studio.
file new project. I'm going to pick an ASP.NET Core web application. I select next. I get to decide where I'm going to put it. Large Condor. Oh, come on, that's funny, right? Instead of Giant Eagle, Large Condor. Would have been better if it was like Enormous Hawk or, well, whatever. I know, don't, don't give up your day job. So I'll hit Create. So it's going to ask me the kind of website we want to create. And for now, we're going to stick with these defaults up here. And we're going to pick a web application that's going to contain example ASP.NET core Razor pages. We could pick empty and build everything from scratch. But... It's nice sometimes to be given something to build off of, so these samples. At the very least, even if we don't have anything else in common with the samples that it builds, we're going to have a home page, right? And we're going to have our layout page. And we're going to use those in forming the rest of our site. So it's probably a good idea to start with this. Uh, we could start empty and then add everything by scratch, but again, Maybe we'll do that at some point in the semester, but for, for now we're going to say create a web application with example ASP.NET Core, uh, ASP.NET Core Razor pages. Create. Notice where it's putting it, by the way. I intended to put it on the desktop. Instead, it putting, uh, put it in a source repository okay all right so now we're good to go notice what we have again we have any number of control files and files that do different things we have places to put things that's one nice thing about using this tool as well is you don't have to uh, organize stuff you just have to follow the organization that it came up with so, in a way, this sort of guides you in the direction of making a reasonable web page. All right, it's not going to do everything for you, but it's going to nudge you in the direction to make a good web page. All right. WWRoot is where we're going to put stuff. There's our site CSS. Any images that we have will go there. Any JavaScript we have, our, our icon will go there, and so on. And then we have our pages. Now this is interesting, and we have to do this. We could have pages in www root, but only if they included no server-side stuff. And guess what? All our pages are going to include server-side stuff, more than likely. So therefore, all our pages are instead going to go into a pages folder. There's a, sh uh, a shared folder, one of which is a, uh, a what would I say, a, a, a statement of the privacy notice and cookies, a layout page, and validation scripts. Now, this is a difference. Has anyone done any ASP.NET programming prior to this class? Okay, maybe some of you have. This is one thing where uh, this method of doing stuff in ASP.NET takes a little bit of a different path. Instead of having validation built into the ASP.NET framework, they simply have included jQuery which is an industry standard, people have probably used it, and therefore um, 
that's something that the framework doesn't have to worry about. They're using another tool for it, the jQuery framework for validation. All right. Now, notice that these pages begin with an underscore. These pages will never get delivered to the client. These pages are like part of pages. This specifies that what layout page are we going to use? We're going to use the one called underscore layout. What's an underscore layout again? What's an underscore layout? Isn't it HTML for the site? HTML for the site? A little more specific? Not for that particular page. Pardon me? It's the layout for every page. It's basically the layout for every page. It's the code that's going to be common on all of our web pages. It's going to be in the layout CS HTML. And this is what defines that that's the layout file that we're using. All right? Now we have an about us, a contact us, an error page, index, and location. I'm going to get rid of some of these. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of the error page because we could have errors, right? I'm not going to get rid of, uh, did we have an about us page? No, we didn't. I'm going to keep the index page the contact us page, the air page, and a layout page, layout page, and then we'll add the other pages to it. So, we'll go here and get rid of the other pages. So I'm just going to right mouse and delete. Contact I'm going to keep, index I'm going to keep, privacy I'm going to keep. And I'm going to add product, services, jobs, and so on. All right? Now, remember the layout page is the page that is going to be the shared HTML. Now, I'm referring back a lot to, to CISS 216 here because we talked in that class how to develop a website. And we did what was best under those circumstances. But now we can do better. Now we can do things a little bit differently, and we can do things in a bit of an improved way because we have this layout file where we can put all that common code. If you remember in CISS 216, we created a template that had the HTML and CSS for the common portion of all of our pages. We drew a wireframe, right? So we went and we said something like, this is what we want our web page to look like. Banner on the top, navigation here, content here, Put her down here. So we built the HTML for it, for our template. We then built the CSS to achieve the layout and get the color scheme and the, 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 the visual design of it for what, for what we want. So we had a CSS file and a template HTML. Then we started cloning these to the individual pages. And when we did that, we tried to make sure as certainly as possible that this template was correct. Because if there was a change to the template, we'd have to go back and change all the clones. All right? And that could be difficult, you know. Not difficult, but time-consuming. 
We were less concerned about the CSS because all our CSS was in a common place. So if we got done with this and decided, well, we want a slightly different shade of green, we just changed the CSS, we were good to go. Well, now we're going to be making a layout page and we're going to make our clones not by copying the layout page, but by referencing the layout page. So the layout page will have all the common code and we're going to point to that layout page and add the stuff just for the index. All right? So that's good news. That's good news because if we decide to add something to the common page, we only have to change it in one place, the layout. That is your dream as a programmer. That is your goal as a software developer, whether you're talking about web development or mobile development or traditional desktop development or whatever. If something changes, ideally, you only have to make that change in one place. If that is true, then you've probably done a pretty good job designing the code for your site. If something changes and you have to make changes in 10 different places, well, maybe you are not using the right tool or maybe you didn't design it correctly. All right. Okay. So I'm going to draw, this is going to be our wireframe. This is what we're going to go to have our uh, website look like. So that's what it's going to look like. All right, banner, nav, footer. This is our content area. And this is the area that gets different on each page. It gets changed from each page, from page to page. I'm hoping that this is, this class is partly a review of CSS and HTML, because it might be a little while since you've done it. It's also a review of the stuff that we went over last week, which is, you probably haven't had too much of a chance to play with it and work on it. So we're doing the old stuff that we did in CIS 216, but in a new environment. So it's sort of new stuff and review stuff combined into one. All right. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to start developing my template and my home page all at once. Now we can define this a lot of different ways. Here's the approach I'm going to take. I'm going to go and I'm going to start out and I'm going to clear out my CSS. So I'm clearing out my CSS. I'm starting with a blank slate with the CSS. I'm going to go into the layout and I'm going to get rid of some stuff from here and some stuff I'm going to keep. Get rid of, actually, well, we'll see. I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff. For this site, there's no cookies, so I'm going to get rid of the privacy notification. So I'll get rid of that. I'm going to keep this stuff about the environment and different scripts that we're going to use. So that's all I'm really keeping. And I'm going to keep this. This div. Except I'm going to change it to section. All right. I'm going to put the footer on its own.
I'm going to get rid of that terrible HR. Why did I call that HR terrible? What is an HR tag? Pardon me? No. Horizontal, horizontal line, horizontal rule is what HR stands for. Why did I call it horrible? <laughs> that seems to be very judgmental. Because you could do it with CSS, exactly. That is a tag that adds nothing to the content of the page. It's just for appearance. And therefore, we don't use tags that don't add any content to the page that just do appearance. Okay, so there's our section. I'm now going to put my header. create an unordered list for all my pages. Notice I'm not putting an actual page name. I'm putting home. Uh, the server map these things to actual pages. So I don't need to say home.cshtml. I'm just going to say home. Actually, that should be index.home. Then I'm going to copy that a couple of times for all my pages. I forgot some tags here. services. Now the good news again is if I forget one, I'll leave off those last two on purpose. Alright? And once we start cloning these, it's not like we have to go back and change all of the clones. We only change it in this one place. I'm going to go into the index file now. And I'm going to make my index file be for our grocery store.
We can put any HTML we want to on this uh, page. All right. Uh, I'm going to get a picture of a grocery store just so that we can put, a, put an image on here. from and I'm saving the image. I'm going to save it initially to the desktop. I'm just going to call it grocery. to it so I follow copyright law. Okay. And then I'm going to go and take that image and put it remember where I put it. How can we help that? We can search. Right, here we go. Source re repository large condor. So I'm going to go into WW root images. Get rid of these, because that was used in the old template. And I'm going to paste this guy in here. All right. I'm then going to put uh, the image in here. So I'm going to say IMG SRC equals slash images slash grocery dot JPEG. speed at what I've done. Alright? I've cleared out the layout file, which is a common layout for all my pages. I put the code in there that I wanted. So I got rid of the stuff that was there, and I put in the code that I wanted for the common code. Alright? That common code contains everything that's going to be on every page, and has a spot where the detail for each page is going to appear. So where it says render body is where it's going to put in the detail of the index and the contact and the locations and so on. It's just going to pop it right in there. What I've done for the index is I've made just that section of the page. Uh, a heading, a paragraph, an image, and then a link to the credit for the image. Okay? So now I think we're okay to run this. So let's give it a run.
Okay, we'll say yes. We'll say yes. And our page is on its way. And there is our grocery store. All right. Just the index page has been completed. Okay. I included the page. Uh, I'm sorry, I included the image on the page. I have my new common layout stuff. I have my image in the images folder. Note how I referred to it, and so on. Okay? Now, I can start working with the CSS. Now, I'm not going to spend tons of time getting the CSS pixel perfect. All right? I am just going to uh, make the, uh, make the uh, layout have some sort of CSS to it. So... Let's go in here and start playing with the CSS. I'm going to do header. And I'm, fly, I'm going to fly through this because I'm hoping it's review. Float left with 100%. Nav. Float left with twenty percent section. Float left with sixty percent. Section image with a hundred percent. And finally, footer, float left with 100%. All right, let's go and run this. do wrong? Well, in my desire to get rid of stuff from my layout file, I also got rid of the link to the CSS file. So I need to put that link in there. Actually, I'll put it down here as the last link in the list so it takes precedence. Link type equals text CSS, rel equals style sheet, href equals. Now, it should apply. Or not. That line was in there. It was? Oh, here it is, yeah. Pardon me? Yes, but the original. 
was an index page as well. No, because everything comes from that. Let's get rid of this stuff for now anyhow. And let's try it. There we go. So there's our page. Nothing earth shattering or fancy or anything like that, but it has our own CSS. It has our own HTML for the common parts of the page. And it has specific code for the home page. Now again, think of how cool this is. All right. Both the common HTML and the CSS are each in one place exactly. So if I need to change that, I just change it in one place, either one. So if I want to make the page be gray, for example, and I want to make all the pages gray, I simply go into the CSS and say body background. gray. If I forgot a couple of links, like I did with jobs and business partners, I can add those in and they get added into every page. again, the index reflects a change, and the common HTML code reflects a change. If I go to contact, that's the other page that I already had, there's our contact information. Now all I have to do is create the other pages, all right? And the other pages... I'll just pick one to do. Locations. Uh, notice that if I hit that, I get the air. Now, how do I make a new page? I click on the file, uh, on the pages folder, right mouse on it, and say add razor page. I can just take add razor page, add, and it asks me what I want to call it, and I'll call it locations. And then I could choose a layout page or I can leave it empty and it will use the default one. So I'm just going to leave it empty. And I can go in here, and for our locations, I can put an unordered list of the different cities where we have a store. Maybe their addresses. I don't know.
you notice that it looks like the other pages. It has the contact, or it has the uh, the, the common uh, code, and it has the common style sheet file. All right, here's what I'd like you to do today. All right, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to go and unlock the lab. You have approximately a half hour worth of lecture time left. I want you to go and create a website with just a couple pages on it. All right, uh, a personal website, uh, a, a page, a home page that has information about you, and then a uh, contact me page. Don't have to put real information if you don't want to. All right, I would like you to include an image. I like you to include some very basic CSS. I want you essentially to do what I did, except a two pager about you, home page and contact, all right? And uh, again, you don't have to make it elaborate, but I want to make sure you have this process down of creating an, uh, a Razor uh, core application and going in and being able to put things where they belong. All right, so that's what you'll do uh, for the last 25 minutes of lab. I'll go unlock the lab. Uh, you don't have to show me when you're done, but it would be cool if you did show me when you're done. All right. If you have questions or problems, work together and ask me. All right. We'll see you over.